Good morning, family, and welcome. Welcome. Joy comes in the morning. You're watching the program on Mana TV, Facebook live streaming. And friends, family, thank you so very much. Our Facebook viewers and our YouTube viewers, thanks so very much for tuning in. MTW family, thank you so very much for tuning in, family. And we trust that uh, you are well. We thank God for the gift of life and for waking us up in our right minds this morning. And we bless God for that. We really bless God for that. And uh, let me just read something here. Oh, love it. Uh, we really bless God for that. The Lord is good and his mercies endure us forever. And uh, family, we continue looking at the theme of this week. And the theme of this week is move forward. You know, we're talking of forward movement. Very much important, beloved, for us to understand that uh, there is a need for a forward movement. More especially when the tide is against you. More especially when everything is pushing you back. More especially when everything says, no, you cannot move forward. You cannot push on. Uh, you know, it's time we make sure that we push forward and we move forward. And I just want to appreciate you, friends, for keeping uh, following this word and these de devotions. And I trust they are contributing immensely in your Christian stance, in your Christian walk. And I want to read this morning from the book of Philippians, chapter number 3, verses 13 to 14. This is the Apostle Paul, a man who has a very, very horrible background when it comes to the faith. You know, we read uh, this portion of the scripture where it says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, you know, he, 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 that says, let's pay attention to what this man is focusing on. He says, I've not achieved it yet, brothers and sisters, but I'm focusing on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. The one thing that the Apostle Paul says, I'm focusing on, I am really putting my efforts on is to forget what lies behind or to forget the past and to look forward to what that which lies ahead. And that says to you and I, friends, that behind you and I, there is something. Ahead of us, there is something. Now, there is a battle between what is behind and what is ahead. And that battle is in me. And I have to choose. Either I will be focusing on what is behind or focusing on what is ahead. But the Apostle Paul says, one thing I do, I choose, not that I have memory impairment, but I choose to forget the past and to push forward, to press forward for what for that which is ahead. He continues to say, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. Did you get that? I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So there is a heavenly prize which uh, God is calling us to in Christ Jesus. He says, for me to win that prize, I press on. But before I press on, I must make sure that uh, I, uh, I forget what is behind. It's very much important. Many a time you'll remember those doors, more especially in the banks, where you get into this um, uh, uh, box uh, type of a door. There's a door before you and there's a door behind you. And until the door behind you is properly closed, the door before you does not close. And that is what Paul is talking about. In order for the door before me to open up, I must properly close the door that is behind me. What is the door behind you? The door behind you stands a greater chance because a door behind you, it has got records. It has got your records. You know what? It, it tempers and deals with your memory. It just presses a button and you remember. But the door before you does not have memory, does not operate on memory. It operates on imagination because the door before you has things that you have never touched before, things that you have never seen with your physical eyes, but these things are there. But you can reach out with the faculty of the mind that is called imagination, allowing the word of God uh, to paint pictures for you, pictures of what God promised you in his word, pictures of what God has for you in the future. It is wrong and it's not right for you and I, my friends, to look into our future through the spectacles of our past, through the, 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 
the experience that we've had in the past or through our memories. You know, your memory is good, but you know what? Don't use your memory to journey into the future. Use your imagination to journey into the future. If you use your memory, guess what? You'll go around the very same mountain. You'll go around the very same things because your memory has stored the things that you have already experienced, the things that you have gone through, the things that you, you, you know better. And I'm saying to us, life is not all what you have experienced, my friend. Life is not all what you have gone through, no. Life is not all what your memory has. Life has something better, greater, and mightier. But for you to reach out to that, you must embark or you must gear or you must step in this faculty of the mind, which is called imagination. You must be able to imagine. You remember when we spoke of, 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 uh, of uh, Papa Abraham, Father Abraham, when God said to him, because what was behind him, what was around him, what was in his mind, in his memory, was the fact that he, his wife is barren, he is old, he does not have a child, it's only Elias of Damascus, who is one of his chief servants, that is going to be his end. That is what was dominating his memory or his, uh, uh, his past. That, those are the things that he knew. Those are the things that he experienced. You know, he, he could tell you to detail. But you know what God said? Abraham, if you only want to live your life according to what is behind you, you are going backward looking forward. And he said to, to Abraham, come out of your tent. The tent here is not necessarily a structure, a physical structure, but the tent, the tent is a place of memory, is a place of the past where you know many of us were living in our tents, tents of our experiences, tents of our memories, the things that we've gone through, the things that we've experienced. And sometimes you, 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 you hang around that tent so much so that you think life is all what is in the tent. But it is not so. God said to Abraham, come out of your tent. Come out of your past. Come out of your memory. I want you to engage this faculty of your mind, which is very much important, which helps us to create pictures of the things that uh, we hope for, the evidence of the things that we don't see, which is called faith. And he said, look up and see if you can number, if you can count the stars. If you can count the stars, know that your children, your offspring, will be as many as the stars. What is God doing here? God is helping Abraham to come out of his past, to come out of his experience, to come out of his past, his yesterday, in, and to engage into his future, to engage into what God has for us. My friends, I must be honest with you. As he said in his word, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your thoughts. I want you to know, even as it, it said in Jeremiah, that I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you an, a, 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 an end, a wonderful end, not to harm you, not to hurt you. But you know what? The plans of God cannot be seen through our memory, cannot be seen through our past, but can be seen through our imagination, knowing and believing what God says, believing the word of God until you imagine these things that God says. You know, I can imagine when he says, I know the plans I have for you. I don't care what surrounds me. I don't care what the devil says, but he, God says, plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Plans to make me press on. Plans, you know, to lift me up. Plans to make me uh, bring out the best that God has for me. And because of that, beloved, you will be encouraged. And But he says to Abraham, look up. And you remember even when Abraham separated with Lot, you remember what happened? Lot took the best land, the wetlands, and then that is what Abraham could see. When he looked around, he saw that the wetlands are all taken. But you know what? God said, lift up your eyes to Abraham as far as you can see. That have I given unto you. That is to say, and he says, look to the west, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, look all the directions. That included even the place which Lot took. And he said, as far as you can see, that have I given unto you. I'm saying, my dear brothers and sisters, 
for you to be able to move forward, you will need to see. And you, you, you don't just see uh, in your own way, but you must see what God sees for you. You must see what God has for you. You must see what God has laid aside for you. See what see the purpose of God, see the plans of God, see the love of God in the midst of the storm, in the midst of pain, in the midst of hardship, see what God is saying according to his way. I said your past has a record of you. That's why your past has an advantage against you. But I'm saying your future is better than your past. What is before you is greater than what is behind you. You remember Lot's wife? Lot's wife, even when they were called to come out of, uh, of, of Sodom and the, the, the judgment of God was to come upon that place and according to Genesis chapter number 19 and verse 17 you know the word says please you move out you don't look back but guess what happened in verse number 26 of, of Genesis chapter 19 we see Lot's wife looking back what is it that is making Lot's wife to look back it is the past it is the memory she remembered some of the things oh my house all my furniture, all my this and this. But where she was going, she did not have a clue. She did not have a plan of it. That is why many people prefer to stay in their past, to stay where they are comfortable, where they know, where they, have, they are managing a routine. But friends, if you will manage a routine, you will die in the routine. You will not fulfill the plans of God for your life. You will not become what God has intended for you to be. Come out of your tent. Come out of your experience. Come out of your past like Paul press on to what that which lies ahead so that you can receive a prize which God has for you in Christ Jesus. I'm praying for us this morning and God bless your family. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this morning we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for waking us up in our right minds. Precious Lord, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for this gentleman. I pray for this family. May your great grace be upon them so that Lord God Almighty, as you have given us our memory, we appreciate it, Lord, because through it we remember even the things that the Lord has done in our past, which helps us look forward to what God can do in the future. But Lord, I pray today that you will help your children, Lord, not to look backward, like Paul said, but to look forward, to imagine like, like Abraham will come out of our tents, come out of our memory, uh, the faculty of, of the mind called memory, and gear into the faculty of imagination, where we imagine your plans and your purposes for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for all our doctors now, our nurses, and all on, those on essential services while we fight this pandemic. May God bless you. Family, may God protect you. May God keep you as you keep on soldiering on. The Lord my God be with you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for all those industries that are opened where our fathers, our mothers, our brothers and sisters have gone there to work. I pray for their protection. I pray for their covering in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And today I pray, Father, for those who have tested positive of this coronavirus. I pray that they will live and not die. Thank you, Lord, for the numbers of the recoveries that are going up and up in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that our people will be able to conquer this virus by your grace and by your hand in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this morning, Father, for those families who have lost their loved ones to this pandemic in the name of Jesus, the spirit of comfort, the spirit of power, the spirit of, 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 of life may envelop them, Lord, so that they are, they, are, they are not coming to a cowardly sack of life, but so that they still see your grace and your comfort in the midst of this all. We lift our government, we lift our leaders before you, Lord God Almighty. May the decisions that they take every day, may they be inspired of the Holy Spirit for the safety and for the deliverance of our nation and our continent and our world. We pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friends, thank you so very much for watching. Remember to share this devotion with friends, with family, with colleagues. Please, it will help a great deal. Let's help, it. help me to spread the message of hope, to spread the message of life to our brothers and to our sisters. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you as you do so and as you continue sharing. We love you with the love of the Lord. Bless you.